Hi there, my name is Don and we're here at Siskiyou Seeds in our propagation greenhouse. It's late January but it feels like spring already. So getting seeds is just the beginning of a journey of growing a garden and starting things from seed is something that a lot of people have felt is been difficult for them. So I wanted to share a few of tips and techniques and possibly secrets as to how we go about doing this. So it all starts with the soil, they say. So how we make our potting soil is one part compost. We make this on the farm and it's basically just our, you know, vegetable scraps and weeds and manure from our animals, sheep and chickens and such for that we compost for a long period of time. And it winds up looking like this. And then we add about eight parts of this compost to about one part of sand. And this is just regular sand. If you can't get a hold of sand, then some places you can get pumice. This is just crushed up volcanic pumice. The sand and the pumice serve to add aeration and drainage, which helps in uh, avoiding uh, fungal diseases and so forth with your plants. So again, one part of your sand or uh, pumice to eight to 10 parts compost. And then we add a little bit of minerals. This is azomite, it's a rock dust for trace elements. Uh, just a small amount, uh, and then uh, crushed up eggshells, and this is for calcium, and I find it really helps with plant disease. So if you come over here, you can see this is mixed up compost, and I'll just demonstrate putting that in there. And you know, we mix this up, and I have just a whole bunch of compost and potting soil already uh, made in here, so whenever I want to plant, I'm all set to do that. So. There's a variety of ways you start seeds, and I'll um, add a list in the comments below of how I recommend starting various things, but I wanted to share uh, a couple popular things people do. This is called a plug tray. They're available at most garden centers. Um, and then a bottom tray. This is obviously has holes in it. People call this a 10 by 20. This sits in here, and it just gives it a little more rigidity because if this was full of soil, it just doesn't have much strength. So this one here, I believe the, this is like 80 holes or something like that. Um, and uh, you put this in here, but if you were to just load this up with soil, see how it's kind of springy there? I find that when you, you do that and you then you go to water it, all the water runs from the edges into the middle and you don't get good germination there. So my friends over at Bluebird Farm taught me this trick. Just take a piece of wood, anything about, you know, yay thick, and put that in the middle and then that helps keep that middle sort of propped up. So then you fill it up with soil and here's another little trick that I learned from a uh, cut flower grower that was really helpful for me. So here I am just you know, filling those full of soil and spread, spread the soil around. And if, if you're not making your own potting soil and you're buying it, that's fine. Just try and buy something organic. A lot of times they add um, chemicals for water retention. So you can see that looks full, but check this out. When I drop it, see how a bunch of these settled quite a bit? So you want to do that little drop to settle the soil in there because you want to give these little seedlings all the soil that they can use in the given amount of space. So there's that. And we'll come over here and I'll show you do -si do what's next. So I just use my fingers to quickly make an indentation. You'll read on a lot of seed packets the ideal planting depth, uh, but pretty much a general rule of thumb is to go twice as deep as the seed is long. So a small seed, like I have parsley we're about to seed here, is only going to want to get planted an eighth to a quarter inch deep. So that's about what I'm doing. It's larger seeds like corn and beans obviously want to be deeper. These kind of plug trays you'd really just use for small seeds like lettuce, basil, parsley, uh, broccoli, kale, that type of thing. So then another trick I do, and pardon my dirty seed packet, but this is part of how it goes. I open it carefully and then I put a little crease in it. So then as I tap it, see how the seeds line up in a little line and it helps you to meter the seed out more carefully. So then I don't need any fancy planting thing. I'm just aiming to get two to three seeds in each one because I want to make sure that a seed grows in every cell. If I just put one, there's a chance it might not. It's always easier to thin 
than it is to have to replant. So you can see how I do that, and I, I won't do the whole thing right now. Then what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of compost and I'll spread it over the top to you know cover up the seeds. And then of course you'll uh, want to label it with a tag, and I always put the date on there as well, so that I so for instance in the variety. So this is a uh, parsley. And you can use your own shorthand, and today's the 28th. That way, if you're wondering, like, hey, are the seeds growing or not, then you have the date and you can come back. And obviously you want to label it because maybe you're growing multiple varieties of things. Another way that you can start seeds is this is just what's called an open tray. And so again, I'm using the 10 by 20 bottom tray. This is a perforated. They make ones that are not perforated. I don't, personally don't like them. Then I put that in there, fill it up with soil, as I've done here. And then I just either use my finger or I can use a piece of wood to make little stripes. And this is helpful if you're using heat mats, uh, germination mats, or you just have limited space because I can start a lot of seedlings in a small space. Like I'll show you how much seed is there. You know, so there's probably 200 seeds there and I can get 200 parsley plants in one little stripe and then later I'll have to come back and pot those up and then in this instance you would just physically cover them up like that and again you could label that stripe and each one of these could be a different thing and to illustrate that point here is some flowers that we started and this is a new technique that we're trying of these these trays that you know have these little furrows if you will of soil and see they're all labeled and this is on a germination heat mat you can buy these at a lot of garden centers. It keeps it about 70 degrees underneath there. So, you know, here we are in January in Oregon and we may want a little more warmth than normally occurs. So that's another way. This is yet another way. These are just wooden trays that I make. I like to get away from using so much plastic. So I've used scrap lumber to just construct these trays. And I've made a lot of them over the years. And again, I can just make furrows with my hand. This is how I do onions and leeks. And it grows really nice, healthy transplants. Uh, when these rot, then they just become kindling or compost. So that's, that's a great way. And then another uh, technique that we use here on the farm, and I was introduced to this from Elliot Coleman, who has some excellent books about small scale farming and gardening. And these are called soil blocks. And they, all they are is our same potting soil and these little blocks. And then they have an indentation for planting. And this is a soil blocker. It's spring loaded. You can see all the indentations down there. They have two different sizes. That one's an inch and a quarter. This one's an inch and a half. You can see these ones are a little bit bigger. So for cabbage, cauliflower, peppers, that type of thing. When you're making, uh, transplants with soil blocks, you want your soil a wetter, uh, almost like a cake batter kind of consistency. So it's the same potting soil, but then I uh, add water in this trough and I'll demonstrate making one. And I just wiggle this down in there, gently roll it back. Sometimes if it's too wet, you can see what happened. A bunch fell out, but no problem. I can just fill it by hand. It's, I would say this is a little bit on the wet side. Um, I could add some dry soil. I scrape that off and then carefully transfer this over here. You want to be gingerly about this. And then it's a motion of pushing down on the handle while lifting up with a little shake. And there you go. And then you have, uh, then I rinse off the blocker in a bucket of water in between. Just helps them to slide out better. You can see I've made my trays the size uh, to fit six of the blocks. So this is 120 seedlings here. And then the way these would get planted, come up here, our little station, is then, you know, again, same seed. We just uh, trickle some seed in to the little indentations, like so. And then let, let's say I've planted this whole thing, then I would come back with some loose soil and just sprinkle some on top of each one. 
Another grower I'd seen uses perlite, that sort of white pumicey material, and they just cover the whole thing, and it's a little faster. I like to avoid buying uh, as much as possible, and just this to me is an ideal no plastic system using all on farm generated uh, eggshells, compost, and sand. So that's it, and uh, again, the heat mats. For those of you that are interested in them, here's, here's an example of one. And these make a really big difference when you're planting something like peppers and tomatoes. Sorry, mine's all dirty, but that gives you an idea. I can get four trays on these. And it just adds a little bit of bottom heat. So in these colder months, you can germinate crops that want warm weather. Otherwise, things like peppers, eggplants, and tomatoes would take a really long time to sprout. They're subtropical crops. And... Um, and that's it. So I wish you all the best success in your gardening season, and hopefully you learned some things today that can help you out in that endeavor.